Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut in this video. What we're gonna be doing is checking out a kind of new-ish Linux distribution called Blend OS. Here is the distribution, I have already installed it, I've been playing around with it, and it actually just updated, so that's super cool. Basically, if I were to compare this to something, this would be very similar to Vanilla OS that we checked out about a month ago. That's primarily due to two main features. One, the operating system is immutable, meaning that the actual core system is read only and you can use various package managers from other distributions. Most notably, we can use Ubuntu, Fedora, and Arch. And I do believe that the actual base of this operating system is Arch. If we uh, dive over to our settings real quick, settings, and then we go down here to a boot, you can see Blend OS. Looks like they probably should switch that out for a, a SVG or PNG, but this is running in VMware Player, so we are in a virtual machine at the moment, so we're not going to get the most, uh, or at least perfect, performance out of it. But that's not really what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the features. This is running in Wayland. We have the 6.3 Zen kernel from default. If we go on their website here, you can see that there are two main versions, one with GNOME and one with KDE Plasma. And if we scroll down to what we get, Blend OS is a immutable operating system but it does differ a little bit because it allows you to install system packages normally. And that's thanks to kind of an yeah, overlay system as it states here that allows you to communicate from your systems terminal with various operating system containers. You can use Android applications, which is cool that that's installed, but it's still not like a good experience. Web apps are super cool. Use any package manager directly, and there are some uh, set steps to set that up that I will show you in just a sec. They also have their very own installer. I already did install this, but it's very simple. It kind of reminds me of the new Ubuntu installer. Super clean, super simple. All the settings and everything that you need and when the system does actually install it just gives you kind of a terminal so you can actually see what is going on and unlike a lot of other installers sometimes you actually have to interact with it which is different they're currently on version 3 and if you're interested in the progress that they have been making i will of course link to this down below now before we get into the actual uh, nuts and bolts of this operating system, I do have to thank the sponsor of Linode, makes these videos possible. Not only can you choose just a base install of a wide variety of Linux distributions, but they also have a marketplace of one-click apps in which you could spin up a variety of services such as game servers, Nextcloud, and a whole bunch more with a single click, a few options, and you're good to go. I've been using Linode quite a bit to host some of the backend services for my website, such as Plausible for analytics. And really, anytime I want to spin up and test a service that I'm not going to put on my home lab, I just use Linode. They charge you by the hour, so if you want to play around with the service for a couple hours, chances are it's going to cost you pennies. And speaking of pennies, you could get a lot of pennies, specifically a $100 60 day credit if you go ahead and use the link down below. So in Blend OS here, what I'm going to do is open up the uh, application page to kind of show you what's going on. One thing you'll notice that's different, everything is automatically put into these folders and that is part of their uh, one of their few customizations that they do. Here under System Tools, I have Blend OS Settings. So if I go ahead and open that up, we can see right here, we have containers. I've already set up a few. If I go over to System here, this is where you could disable that app grouping that I was just talking about. But for now, I'm going to keep it. So there's two things, there's containers and there's associations. And you can see I have Yay associated with Arch and DNF associated with Fedora. So if I open up our terminal here, I could kind of show you what's going on. So the base system is Arch. Now, if I did something like sudo pacman s and I wanted to install NeoFetch, type in my password, it's gonna fail. This file system is read only. Now, since I did the association with Yay with the Arch container, let's do the same. Actually, I think I've already installed that. Another example would be something like GIMP. So if I did Yay and GIMP, it's going to call to that container and you can see all the options I have. I want to install GIMP. Let's install all these packages. And now it's gonna run through and install all those packages in my Arch container. So now if I go up here under our applications and you can see it was put right here. It wasn't thrown into the proper folder, but that's okay. You can see the GNU image manipulation program running on the Arch container. If I open that up, it would open up like any standard application just installed on your base system. And you can see GNU image manipulation program on arch.blend. And then I could do the same thing with DNF, for example. So if I did sudo DNF install and we want to grab GIMP, you can see everything that's going to install in this specific container. And there it goes. And it's cool because now in this system, well, it is Arch anyways, but now we have access to the AUR as well as the app package manager and a lot more, which I'll show you after I open up this version of GIMP. 
So you see it's complete. If I go over to activities, applications, you can see it there. The icons uh, sometimes take a little bit to get <laughs> looking good, but you can see, for example, graphics, this isn't here now. So it kind of figured out where it needed to go. If I open up this containerized GIMP, you could see it's just going to be the exact same situation that we saw in the Arch container. Boom, there it is on Fedora.blend. Absolutely beautiful. Now, let's say we wanted to run a different container because I have Arch and Fedora set up, so I have access to Yay and DNF. Let's set up something else. Click here, we can see some of the options. We have Alma Linux, Rocky Linux, we get some CentOS going on, Kali Linux, Fedora. So with Kali, it comes with a lot of a penetration and kind of hacker man type tools. But let's just get apt. Let's get the latest version of Ubuntu. I'm gonna be super creative and I'm gonna call this Ubuntu. Let's add that. And then it's going to pull it from Docker. So that is kind of the background of how it is doing this. And starting blend, it may take a few minutes, which by the way, it does. Giving us perfect time, coffee break. All right, this is a webcam. So you can see it's kind of follows me around. <laughs> I'm testing it out, pretty cool. Oh, it looks like we're finishing up here. Oh, it exited. I was trying to catch that in time, but there you go. It automatically turns off. We see Ubuntu. Now, of course, we can access everything with associations, but we could always just dive into the actual console of Ubuntu. So then I could run something like boop, sudo apt update and actually manage these containers one on one. So there's something to be updated. So let's do a sudo apt upgrade Perl base. Let's go for it. And there we go. Our system's updated. And now if I wanted to do install NeoFetch specifically in here, if you want to do kind of the terminal programs that actually interact with the uh, um, containers, you're going to want to uh, be in the actual container. And these Docker images really don't have a lot of dependencies. So the first couple applications you install might take a little bit because there's a lot of other things it's going to need to grab. But with that, we can NeoFetch and you can see this is Ubuntu.blend and we have access to our full kind of host system here. Now with that, of course, I can run apt in here, but if I go over here, just as another example, open up our terminal, boop. If I type apt here, it's like, what the hell are you? Oh, there we go. It's like, what the hell are you even talking about? Command not found, what is apt? Well, I'm gonna tell it what apt is. The binary name is going to be apt and I'm going to have that associated with our Ubuntu container. So if I add that, there we go. Let's see if it works out of the gate. Enter, there we go. So now it knows what apt is. It knows how to communicate with that container. Super, super cool stuff. Especially I think if you're like a developer or a programmer, your preferred environment is Linux, really easy access to all of these. Granted, you could just spin up your own Docker containers, but being able to have the association built into the host system is really, really nice. So from there, we're gonna move on to Android applications. And if you've ever tried to install Android applications on a Linux system, you probably know it is not a fun time. This right here saves you a couple steps, but it will still lead you to the same not very fun time that you're gonna get if you just install everything yourself. So we have the Aurora Store, FJoid. If I open this up, it does open applications, but it's really, really going to depend on the application, whether or not if you're going to have a good time. I've clicked open and I'm waiting for it still. And I don't, I don't really, and I don't really want to spam it. But let's try to go about this a different way. I've already installed some of these uh, Android applications. Whoa, there it goes. Phone is starting. All right. So it needed to fire up the back end. Just took it a minute. I'm going to try clicking open again. Wish me luck. There we go. The Aurora store unable to resolve. Of course it is. Okay. Try that one more time. How about we try opening settings? Let's see if this works. It was working for me earlier. It did just update, so something might have broke, which again really would not surprise me in the even the slightest of bit. Um, okay, let's go over here. Go over here. Try to open an Android app through here. You could see the apps I have. I, I got Outlook Lite. This was one of the applications that actually worked okay. I had Instagram. Doesn't work very well. It throws it to the side and won't load anything. But let's open up Outlook Lite because this, if it will open. Okay, well, let's reboot. Sometimes you just got to reboot. All right, this time I'm going to just try diving straight into the application that kind of worked. So Outlook Lite, let's see what we get. All right, phone is starting. Maybe if we open up like a system app, let's open calculator. Haha. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, <laughs> I restarted the system again and just opened settings up directly. And now it seems to be kind of working. And if I can I like drag, where's my little thing? There it is, about phone. This is Android version 11. We could see the phone is just an x86 device. We have our build number. So this is running lineage in the background, which is kind of cool. I think we've checked out lineage in the past on like a really old, actually, I don't know where it went. I got these two uh, Linux phones here, so that's cool. <laughs> 
honestly, Ubuntu Touch is running better than this on a computer. Okay, so now that that worked, maybe we can actually open an application. It doesn't think I have any app stores anymore, so that's fun. Android apps. Calculator. I'm throwing it a, a, a softball. Nope, it's not taking the softball. Okay, let's hit install Aurora Store again and see if I can open it after reinstalling. Open, 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 open. Man, okay. I promise you that this was working before it updated. I had uh, the Outlook running and all that. Still a crappy experience, but I did get a lot of the applications to actually work. Regardless, the main point is the Linux containers here. Super fun stuff. And then just other than that, it's kind of your typical immutable operating system. Still a lot of things to do. Really fun. Games here. This was on the container fedora. I don't think this ended up actually launching. Let's see if it will after an update. Ooh, okay. So yeah, this is running containerized. And it's actually working. Now, last time it was like, when I would hover over the buttons, it would be like two buttons down. The cursor wasn't like aligned properly. But let's just jump into an AI game real quick. Ooh, my computer's cooking. <laughs> wow, it's a little laggy, but we're kind of running a <laughs> virtualized and then containerized. So if I didn't have this in a virtual machine, I mean, yes. it'd probably be a much smoother experience. But it's working. It's working nonetheless. It didn't work last time. So I've lost Android apps, but I've gained uh, containerized gaming. So I'll take that trade. I'll take it.